Hey guys, today we are going to talk about modern staples being the cheapest they have ever been. So today we are looking at a graph and the graph shows what the prices are from October 2012, which was $1,600 for this exact same, these exact same staples. They might be different additions. They will pick the cheapest of the additions, but the seven mythics, 55 rares, 10 uncommons and one common that make modern staples as defined by MTG Goldfish. I took a look at the list. You can go on the website. It, the list makes a lot of sense to me. They are the modern staples. At that time in 2012, they were $1,600. Now they have a steady rise all the way up, up till Born of the Gods and Journey into Nyx where they didn't, didn't spike and hit almost $3,000. So if you had put in your 1600 in October 12th, Oh, sorry, October 2012, you could have made a ton of money on April 2014, almost doubling your initial magic investment. Now, the second big spike happens during Oath of the Gatewatch to Shadows over Innistrad, where this particular set of cards moves closer to $4,000. And then there is a epic, epic decline. I will explain the decline in more detail. And at the end of the day, modern is cheaper today at 14, at a shade under $1,500 than it was in 2012. Think about what I'm saying. Modern is cheaper today for these staples. And these staples are, they are the best staples. And there's no better staple to look at than Tamagoyf. Tamagoyf is when Modern Master 2013 happened was a $200 card and vendors inflate artificially inflated their prices because supply was so low and they made a ton of money selling these cards to players. So Tamagoyf went from 200 and now it is a shade under $90. It's under $100. What happened to Tamagoyf happened to most of these cards in the set. And let's just go over it. Let's go over the price history and what this means for you. Essentially, what I'm saying is if you don't have a modern deck, buy a modern deck. Pick a modern deck, start buying components for it, and this is a good time to start playing modern. So when we look at Oath of the Gatewatch and Shadows over Innistrad, you see that the price point is just around $4,000 for this set of cards, set of modern staples. What happens from Eldric Moon onto Kaladesh is interesting. You see a straight plummet down, and that's because of reprints. Reprints and loss of confidence in the product. Loss and confidence in the product is coming from many things, mainly Eternal Masters was reprinted twice. Modern Masters has a 2017 has a lot of really good cards in it. And even today, even today, we have the announcement that we get iconic masters towards November. So it is possible that every year we get two master sets, one for the more eternal format and one for the modern format. That would be surprising. And at the same time, we have Commander, we have Commander Anthologies, we have Arc Enemy. There could be staples in all of those as well. So when you were talking about price points and what's actually happening, think about this for a moment. $4,000 becomes less than $1,500 in the span of six months. Isn't that crazy? That $4,000 of modern staples pretty much overnight can become $1,474.68. And, and wow, $1,000, 474. I, it's still so interesting that number to me because I wanted to do a video about it. I wanted to wait a little bit after Modern Masters 2017 to see what actually is happening. And I was shocked by that number. I felt like the staples would still be 2,000 but they haven't been that way for a while. They have dipped below 2000 during Afer Revolt. And that's what happened. So even during Modern Masters, 
as you can see from the little blimp at the end, the modern masters 2017, it had already declined there. The announcement is enough to, for the people who are hoarding these cards to begin selling. And when they begin selling, they have to compete against each other and they're trying to sell at the lowest price point. And it gets in this scenario where modern just is extremely affordable. Modern is more affordable today than it was in 2012 during RTR. That's crazy for me to say that. That is insane for me to say that, but it is. I mean, the one card you can look at is Tamagori. Okay, so let's go over the graph again. The full graph from Dark Ascension all the way to RTR. And this is the entire life of modern pretty much. And you see the steady incline. You do see some points where it goes faster than other points, but generally modern has been a financial dream for these vendors and these hoarders and these collectors because you never lose money. And that's what I was saying about MTG Finance. Anyone can do it in 2012, right? January 2012, anyone can do it during Dark Ascension because all the cars just go up in price. They just steadily go up in price, so everyone sounds smart. But now, can you do it? That's, and you know, I'm more attracted to MTG Finance now than I was before, because I feel like at this point in time, you will have people who are analytical experts. So I'm Google Analytics certified, which doesn't very, mean very much. I'm, I have a lot of certifications in analytics, that what I do as a day job is analytics. So when you look at analytics and look at data, there's some people who have the education to do it or have the experience of doing it. And there's some people who don't. Those people are gonna have a harder time in today's market than in 2012, where you could say any card in modern and likely it would go up in price. Today, that's actually the reverse. It's more like pre-ordering hype. I've been very proud of the fact that I can nail pre-orders pretty, pretty good because 95% of the cards will go down in price and then you're looking at maybe one or two cards that really go up in price to justify, because you're gonna to have to buy list them, to justify the, they have to go up two to three to four times for you to justify buying them at pre-order prices should you sell them out and buy list. And if you buy them in large quantities, that's your only out pretty much. So today it is much harder to do an MTG Finance than it was in 2012 especially in the modern format. And you will see some people who are very good at it. And you will see some people who you believed was good, who are, have state or I guess they stated they were very good at it. And it turns out they don't have the analytical background. And you might be like, oh, well, why, why do you have to involve analytics in this? At, at the end of the day, MTG Finance is a more volatile market, it is a market dependent on a lot of factors and that can be influenced at a single level in terms of if a single person buys all the Norwales, what happens to the price, right? And everyone else likes it. Yeah, Norwales didn't get better as a card overnight. It's still a okay card. I mean, it's not even okay, it's just really bad, but it can go up in price. So you can have a single actor actually influence the, the price of these cards. But as a whole, if you are interested in modern, buy the modern card from modern 2017. This is the cheapest the format has ever been since its inception in Dark Ascension. It did not, it does not get cheaper than today. Maybe tomorrow will be slightly cheaper, but I would be surprised to see this price dip too much. I think it's already at an all time low. The other caveat here, I, I do want to mention it, is the modern is no longer supported as a Pro Tour format. And modern is not, if Wizard of the Coast had its choice, they would make sure modern is gone. Just like how they got rid of Legacy. They are moving modern in the same way that they moved Legacy when they really wanted to get rid of it. And when you talk about FNMs being modern, if Wizard of the Coast had a choice, they would make FNMs all standard or draft. They would make every GP standard or draft. It's only the players who are saying, hey guys, you know, I can't spend this much money. I want to buy into your eternal format. Please make me eternal format so these cards have value after they rotate out. Otherwise, if you didn't have any eternal formats existing, the cards would be 
I mean, outside of the collector, they would not have any value at all because they couldn't be played. So you do need to support the eternal format somewhat, but the how you support them and how much you support them depends, right? Legacy has just inclined because people don't see Legacy. A new player is not going to see Legacy as, okay, this is an introduction point for me. Let me go spend $2,000 on a deck because Wizard of Coast is promoting it on GPs or promoting it in Pro Tours or promoting it in a way that I see the videos of it. Even Star City Games has decided Legacy cannot be promoted in that way. And it's purely analytical, purely financial. If Star City Games could promote Legacy, they would. Or they could run those events. They would run more of them. The problem is it's a net it's a negative expected value for them, so th therefore they cannot continue. And that includes the inflated prices they can sell these legacy cards at. So when you talk about modern, will it go the same way as legacy? I think that's a different question for a longer, like a longer video, because I do want to get in, dig deep into what Wizards of the Coast is doing to modern. But as of this video, they did a very good job. They have reduced the prices to an all-time low. You are not going to get modern cards cheaper than this, in even in 2012. You could not get modern cards cheaper as a format for the modern staples in 2012 than you can get today. And I found that I found that quite interesting, due solely to reprints. And 100%, they did a great job on reprints, and it's something that I really commend them on doing because it probably wasn't easy. Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye.